Hey guys. So today we're going to talk about something called uh, parody. Uh, maybe you've heard it before. I'm not talking about parody as in mockery uh, of some sort, but parity uh, as in even and odd type of questions. Evens and odds. You know even numbers and odd numbers, right? 2, 4, 6, 8 are even. Uh, 1, 3, 5, 7 uh, are examples of odd numbers. So um, there aren't too many parity questions throughout the SAT, but still it's pretty important to know them uh, only because timing uh, is everything on this SAT. Every second that you save, that adds to your points. So whenever you see a parity question, uh, you need to make sure that you nail it, okay? Uh, all the concepts are the same. There aren't too many rules that you have to memorize. I will share with you some that you should memorize, uh, but beyond that, you don't need much at all. So let's get right to it. Um, the first point we're going to get to is in test number four. So in your official college board study guides, please turn to test four, section three, number eight. The questions will be on the board here uh, anyway, so if you don't have your books, that's okay, but um, this is from test four, section three, number eight. And here is that question. If A and B are odd integers, they tell us that A and B are both odd integers. Which of the following must also be an odd integer? If A and B are odd, which of these is also odd is the question. Now, be careful, this is a must be true question, not could be true. We're not looking for just one instance where it works. We're making sure that in each of these cases, it, it, it's true every single time. It's always an odd integer every single time, okay? One way to, to do this definitely is to go ahead and plug in numbers. For all parity questions, even in odd questions, you can plug in numbers for the most part. 99% of them probably you can plug in numbers. So don't be afraid to do that, but when you do it, just make sure that you, you test enough, quest, uh, enough numbers uh, to be convinced that it's gonna work all the time. Unless it's a could be true question, in which case it's pretty simple. Just find one number that works and hey, you have the answer. But if, whenever it says must be true, you have to make sure you test enough numbers to be convinced uh, that your answer is the correct answer. Now, I know you, you can, especially if you've been through some of the lessons before uh, on plugging in and, and different strategies and techniques, um, I, I'm not going to worry too much about you being able to plug in numbers here and just testing this out uh, because that's not too hard to do. Um, what I rather would like to focus on in, in this lesson is um, are the rules that you should know for parity, right? Um, for instance, if I ask you this question, take an even number, multiply it by an even number. What kind of number do you get? That will always be an even number. Actually, even times anything, such as odd, will also be even. Even times anything is always even, okay? Even times any number, any integer, will always be an even uh, integer. Odd times odd in multiplication is the only time you get an odd. Let's talk about uh, addition or subtraction. It's really the same operation. Um, subtracting is just adding a negative number. Okay, so the same rules apply. If I take an even number and I add an even to it, it's going to remain even. Like 2 plus 2, that's going to stay even. So that's also even. If I take an even number, and this time add an odd number, like 2 plus a 3, it's an odd number, okay? Um, if you take an odd number plus an odd number, such as 1 plus 1, it'll be even, okay? So even plus even is even, odd plus odd is even, but when you mix the two, even and an odd together and add them up, that that's the time that'll give you uh, an odd number, okay? So this is something you want to... Make sure you understand, either memorize it if you don't want to understand it, but it's not you know, hard to, to understand this part. So either understand it or memorize it. Let's see if we can use some of these guys throughout the next couple problems, okay? I'll leave this up here for now, but I'll probably need to erase it in a little bit. Uh, A and B again are odd integers, so they're odd. Which of the following must be odd? So which of these are odd? Let's look at each one separately. In Roman number one, we have, remember A is an odd integer, right? Odd. What is odd plus odd, right? A is odd, one is odd, so what is odd plus odd? Odd plus odd is even, right? 
And even plus, what is b? b is also given as an odd number. So even times odd is what they want us to do. And we know that even times odd, even times anything, right? Such as even times odd is always even. Therefore, is this an odd integer? No. 1 is not part of the answer, which means you can cross off a, you can cross off d, because they both have 1 uh, among the answer choices. Well, in, that, in, in those answers. So let's go to test Roman numeral 2. a, again an odd integer, plus 1. Odd plus odd. What is that? Odd plus odd? Odd plus odd is going to be an even number, right? Plus b. b is given as an odd number. So what is even plus odd? Here is even plus odd. That's always going to be an odd number, right? And so we know that Roman numeral 2 will work all the time, okay? Because we're basing these on rules, not just on uh, some sample uh, numbers. So Roman numeral 2, I know that 2 has to be an answer, therefore C can't be an answer because it doesn't include 2. So now we're stuck between B and E. It's not bad at all. If, you, if you're stuck here, you can just guess and um, it's going to work for you rather than against you on this test. But let's try Roman numeral 3. A, which is an odd integer, plus odd, odd plus odd. Odd plus odd is even, minus b. What is b? b is an odd number, right? So this is even minus odd, right? That's just like even plus odd, same, um, same idea. So uh, even plus or minus odd gives you an odd number, right? So room number three works as well. Therefore, our answer will be e for number eight. Let's go to... We're going to uh, move on to the next uh, test. Let's go to test 5, section 8, number 13. And here it is. Hope you guys have this memorized now or written down. All right, let's check out number 13. If x, y, and z are positive integers such that the value of x plus y is even, so this whole thing is even, and the value of that whole thing is odd. Which of the following must be true? Again, it's a must be true question, so if you're going to plug in numbers here, which you can, just make sure you test enough uh, numbers, sets of numbers, to make sure that you're convinced that that'll be the correct answer, it's giving you the correct answer. Uh, but again, the point of this, this lesson is to, to kind of share the rules with you in case you want to use that on the test. So x, y, z, they don't tell us whether x, y, and z are even or odd, okay? But they do tell us that they are positive integers. So it's the value of x plus y is even, right? And x plus y, just because x plus y is even doesn't mean that x can be, uh, x is even and y is even, nor does it say x is odd, y is odd. It doesn't tell us anything about x and y individually. It only tells us about the sum of x and y, and they tell us that that is an even number. Okay? So x and y can either be even or odd. Right? If you look at uh, your rules again, um, you'll see some examples right there. So we don't, we're not given too much here, just, just the fact that x plus y is an even number, great. But the great thing here is in the next crazy, uh, super complicated looking expression, we see exactly x plus y, which is given right here. We know that x plus y is what? They tell us that x plus y is even. What they're asking you to do is take this even number and square it. Squaring just means multiplying by itself, right? So if you square an even number, you're basically doing even times another even. What is even times even? What's even times anything? Even times anything is always even. This whole guy is an even number. I'm sorry about the O's and the odds uh, kind of mixing together. But this right here, this whole thing is an even number. Maybe, maybe I should box this instead. So that whole thing is an even number. So we're taking an even number plus x, and I don't know what kind of number x is, remember, right? It could be either or. And z uh, was never never mentioned before except just, just to name it. Um, so we don't know anything about z. Okay. So uh, what we know so far is that this value here is even, that this value is even, plus that, plus the z. This whole thing is 
i. That's what we know so far. We just discussed that x and y can be either even or odd, and it can always you know, work. Um, it just depends on what, what values you choose for the other one. So uh, can x be odd? Yes. But does it have to be? No. Does, it, does x, and can x be even? Yes. Does it have to be? Again, no. So these two are not the answers. Right? Again, we don't know anything about x, so we can't say anything really about x. Um, we don't really know anything about x, y either. If we knew individually about x and y separately, right, we would know what x times y would be because even times anything is even and odd times odd is odd. But they don't tell us anything about the x nor the y, so it's hard to tell whether uh, the x, y is going to be even um, or not. So, and, and we don't even see x, y anywhere here um, either. So these two kind of look off, but you know, it could be right. Um, you can, again, test some numbers. But I want you to focus on this guy here uh, because it actually is the correct answer. Uh, so I'll give that away. But let's, let's see what C says. If Z is even, here is Z. We, don't, we, don't, we didn't know anything about Z before, but they say take the case where Z is even. And just in this case, if Z were even, then do we know anything about X in that case? Right? So, okay, but let's, let's see. If Z is even, let's say that Z might be even. Okay? If Z is even, does X have to be odd? Well, even plus even is even, right? So in order for this whole thing to be an odd number, we need an even number plus what kind of number to give me an odd number? We need even plus odd to give me an odd number. Therefore, if z is even, x is odd. And that is true, right? They're not saying that x is odd all the time, but if z is even, then x is odd. And that is a true statement. Of course, if, x, if z is odd, then x would have to be even. So that we get even plus odd is odd, plus even is still odd, right? And again, going back to those rules that I had listed for you before. So C is the correct answer for number 13. We're going to try a, a couple more problems here. Um, and we're going to jump to, we're going to take a break, uh, but when we come back, We'll cover a couple more questions. Try, until uh, I'm back, try test 8, section 7, number 3, test 9, number, uh, section 5, number 17, and also test 9, section 8, number 12. After you try those three problems, let's see if we can uh, match up some answers and, and do these problems together.